Hello everybody, how you doing? My name is John Fisher, Minister of Music at New Testament Church of God, Brixton Community Church, Lambeth Road, in the heart of South London, actually Brixton. Uh, on behalf of Bishop Eric Brown, Reverend Millicent Brown and the Brixton family, we want to welcome you to this another edition of The Gospel. We pray that you'll be blessed by what you hear, what you see and the words that are given. Listen, uh, before I carry on, you're looking at this picture. I've got a number of these pictures uh, by painted by a good friend from the UK named Scott Moles. And this one depicts us as individuals rising on eagles' wings and that's what we've got to hold on to is our faith that during this time of pain and suffering and everything that we're going through that yet again we will rise on eagles' wings that's what the Bible says and that's what God says to us this morning we pray that you'll be blessed by the word of God brought up to you by our bishop by the songs, by the scriptures and by the presentation of our church in general but I pray this bow your heads with me for a second and let us just pray Father, thank you for one more day that you've given us Another day that we can stand and we can sit and we can lie and we can just say, Abba Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We pray and Lord, we come today, Lord Jesus, remembering all of those who are bereaved, who are sad of the loss of loved ones, family members. Uh, we remember those who are going through difficult times at this time, but we pray as the picture depicts that they will once again rise and have the faith that they will rise on eagle's wings and soar over the various problems and situations that they are going through. Lord, stand with us, be with us, be our comfort and our shield. That's what you promised, and that's what you said in your word, Lord, and we hold on to the word of God. Be blessed, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for this time, and we look to you in Jesus' name. May God richly bless you as you enjoy today's gospel. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for them, so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply, do not dwindle away, and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I send you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. Here endeth the reading of God's word. Amen.
is Harvey, I'm the youth leader at Brixton New Testament Church of God and today we're going to be talking about love and sacrifice. The Bible has so many examples of where this is brought to life, whether it be from Abraham and Isaac, whether that is um, uh, the story of Esther, whether the story of Joseph, um, but today we want to, to get some of our young people to talk about the ultimate sacrifice that was made for us and that's looking at the passage John 3.16. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you get are blessed by what the young people have to say. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Hey, um... What do I think of my dad? I think my dad is a role model. He's a super hard worker. He's a, the funniest guy I know. He always brings levity and um, he mixes it in with a message at all at all times. He's always giving us stories with with um, sorry, there's flies out here. Giving us stories with um, like with jokes, but there's a message in the in the middle there. Sacrifices he's made. Uh, I think a lot, man. He's he's he put us on from early. Me and my brother, like maybe to the detriment of his his own music at, at some point before um, before we got to the level we're at now. But he allowed us to play, allowed us to grow. He he just let us flourish, man. He let, he put a, a focus on our music from early. He let us do what we needed to do. He provided everything we needed studio drums like bass lessons keys lessons for me anything we needed that sorted us man so big props for my father definitely um, good day everyone i will be reading a poem by annie johnson flint god has not promised skies always blue flower strewn pathways all our lives through god has not promised sun without rain Joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labour, light for the way. Grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. Good morning guys, I hope you're all doing very well during this lockdown period. I hope you're all staying safe. Uh, I'm going to quickly come to you with a short piece of scripture from John 3.16. Very, very famous scripture. I'm sure we all knew it from when, know it from, sorry, from when we were all small. And it reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a very, very famous and powerful scripture, um, which shows us that God sacrificed his son, you know. And um, that's the key word I take from that, is sacrifice. God did something very extraordinary to build closer relationships to show how much that he loves us and how much he cares for us and that's something i have to that i've adopted and incorporated personally throughout my christian faith the fact that you can give up something that's very close to you and put god first and just give that time and dedication um and doing that god's blessed me so much i have so much to th uh, thank god for and i just want to just kind of share that with you guys that look if there's something that you guys um you know love something that you guys do every day maybe if you could just take a break and give it maybe five minutes ten minutes whatever you can do uh, and give your best to god whether that be praying whether that be fasting you know you know praying and fasting with family members you know just building those bonds and those relationships especially during these the times and the crisis that we're in God loves to see that we do these sort of things. You know, it just shows him that we care about him, that we want to draw closer to him. And it's adopting what God's done. And that's all we can do. So, guys, just a very short uh, message for you guys that look, if wherever it may be, may, the TV watching or, you know, the long phone calls, all God wants to do is just see that you can just spare that time, sacrifice something that's dear to you and just to draw nearer to him, like I said, by praying by fasting, by reading your Bible, being on your knees, just showing God how much you care, you know, that you want to be close to him and that you've sacrificed something that's very close to you. God sees that and I'm telling you, God will bless you. Anyway, guys, I really hope you do stay safe during this lockdown period and hopefully we'll all be together soon. 
Take care. to reflect on the idea that we need to be marathon runners and not sprinters. We're all in this predicament together, isolated from our loved ones in many cases, and in this lockdown situation for the foreseeable future. We don't know when it's going to come to an end. And I want to think about what kind of Christian athletes we need to aim to be during this time. 
Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27 that we're in a race and that we are running this, this race and we need to run it to win. So we have to set our mind um, on the fact that, you know, we're going to be in a long race and there are things that we need to do if we are to win this race, because at the end of the race, there's a prize. So the first point is we must run in a way that we're going to win. Now, any athlete knows that what they put into their bodies and how they train is going to have a big impact on whether or not they win the race coming second or trail. So we need to watch what we eat as Christians, our fuel that gives us nourishment, that sustains us is the word of God. And so daily, we need to feed on the word. We need to read the word. We need to meditate upon the word and allow the word to nourish the parts of us that only the word of God, which is a spirit, can nourish. We also have to look at the way that we train ourselves. We have to train ourselves by disciplining our bodies. Not an easy thing. Some athletes wake up early in the morning, day after day after day whether they feel like it or not, they get themselves up, they shake themselves off, and they head to wherever it is they're going to head to, be it the pool, be it the track, be it the gym, or even just in their home, but they're going to train. It's no different for us as Christians. We have to train and discipline our bodies to pray, to connect with God, to worship, and I mean true worship, because that is what he expects and requires of us. If we are seeking him in true worship daily during this race, he will do what no other power can do. He will nourish us. He will help us to develop the stamina that we're going to need to see us through to the end of this race. And that's what marathon runners have a great deal of. They have stamina. They don't give up after the first 100, 200, 800 meters. They have to be able to go the full course. We have to be able to go the full course. So what we put into our bodies and how we train ourselves is vitally important. Paul knew that it was gonna be important for him because he made the point of saying that he doesn't want to just tell others about the importance of disciplining their body and exercising self-control in their lives. In case, at the very end, if he wasn't doing the same thing himself, he would be disqualified. So he had to put his own body under subjection and make his body a slave to himself. So he was in charge of what he did, when he did it, how he did it. He didn't let his body dictate the times and the whens he would, that he would pray or seek the face of the Lord. He made those decisions. To run this race, we have to run with a purpose. We must know what we're aiming for at the end of the race. There's no point in starting if you're not aiming for the prize. There's no point in putting your body through the pain of the training process if there is no worthwhile prize at the end. In this isolation time, this time of lockdown, we have an opportunity to draw closer to our Lord, to our Saviour. We have an opportunity to, to hear him in a way that we perhaps hadn't heard him before because we were too busy rushing or we made excuses. We can't make excuses now because for many of us, we're at home. And even if we're working from home, we can take some time out. 
there is a bit more flexibility. We're not working ourselves to the point of exhaustion. We can pace ourselves through our day. So we can find that time to connect with our savior, to connect with our friend, to connect with our Lord. Because ultimately, he's the prize. He is the prize. We're running this race so that we can gain, hallelujah, we can gain a personal relationship that far exceeds all the other relationships that we have. And we're fine tuning this relationship during this time of lockdown. It isn't easy. I know it isn't easy. But we know that if we persevere, if we build our stamina, we build that capacity as we pray regularly, read the word regularly, meditate regularly, worship in whatever way we worship. We know that the Lord's promise is that if we seek him, we will find him. If we're doing it with all of our hearts, that's his promise. In this race, we are running with a purpose, with an aim, and that is to find our Lord in a place where we hadn't found him before, where we can hear him in a way that we hadn't heard him before. There may be things that he wants us to do in this time, and he's given us time to do it. So let us remember, everyone, we're in a race. Don't be a sprinter. Be a marathon runner. Be someone who's got the stamina to go the whole course. Be the one who's going to watch his fuel that he puts in his body to empower him. The one who's going to exercise that self-control, self-discipline, and maybe sacrifice in order to gain the prize, a better, deeper relationship with our Lord and Saviour. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just want to praise you and thank you for another day a day that you have made. Lord Jesus, we just want to let you know how much we appreciate you. We come to you because we have hope in you today, Lord, because you said we should put our trust in you. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, you said, we should put our hope in you because you're a God who richly provides for us everything that we need. Lord Jesus, you promise you will provide for us. You also remind us in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper and to give hope and a future. We hope in you, Lord. We pray for our world today. We pray for our family, our government, our brothers, our sisters. Those who need healing today. Those on their hospital bed. Lord, we pray that you will give hope and healing in their bodies. Those who are bereaved, Lord Jesus, we pray that you too will give them hope. Lord Jesus, knowing that you're a God who came through. Lord Jesus, for Moses, for David, for Meshach, Daniel, and a bendigo, Lord Jesus, you will come through for us. Even though we walk through the valley 
of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil, for thou art with us, your rod and your staff, hallelujah. They do comfort us. They do comfort us. Lord, we know there is so much going on right now. COVID-19 has taken so many of our loved ones. But Lord, help us to realize today that you are a bigger God. You are a God who knows all about us. You are a God that can change every situation. Father, help us today to be consoled. Lord Jesus, knowing that you will see us through. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Hear our prayer today. While on others thou art calling, do not pass us by. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be, will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will learn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. He will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with, my, with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and thank God for this lovely day. The psalmist say the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining me uh, on Facebook and if you can just press share that all the friends and family members of yours can be enriched by what we have to share today. It's just a great thing to be in the presence of the Lord. We had a wonderful service this morning led by John and we look forward to ongoing blessings from the Lord. I would like to uh, share with you from the book of Proverbs chapter number three and I'm going to read uh, from verses one to uh, verse eight. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And so, Father, we commit this uh, short session into your hand and ask in Jesus' name for divine illumination in your word. And let uh, it be that as I would speak to your people near and far, they will be blessed and be challenged and uh, faith will take a hold in their hearts. And they can face the future confidently knowing that God is on their sides. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. My focus this morning is on uh, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Our world is in a mess. In the space of three short months, everything that we've come to expect as solid and sure have been shaken to their very core. The glues that held family and society together have suddenly lost their grip and things are coming apart at the seams. Three short months ago, we could not envisage a world with closed churches, closed schools, closed restaurants and clubs, closed parks, closed pubs, and no live sports. Today, this is our reality and likely to be so for the foreseeable future. Life has dramatically changed and things will never be the same again. We're now having to adjust our lives to what is termed the new normal. Audrey Saad captures our present time in her famous hymn entitled Abide With Me. The third verse reads, Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joy grows dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. These are transient times indeed. Times when economies are collapsing, wealth, fame and fortune have lost their appeal. Times when all those things in which people have trusted in for their security have lost their meaning. These changing times compel us to reconnect with our spiritual inner man. In these times of change and decay, we must reaffirm our trust in God who is immutable, unchangeable, the God who is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise, the God who is eternal. Reconnecting with our spiritual man becomes even more important when there is no congregational worship and when normal fellowship with brothers and sisters is absent. Our present predicament bears some similarity to those faced by the believers Paul addressed in his epistles, the epistle to the Hebrews. They were cut off from the temple worship in Jerusalem from the priesthood or the service of the priests. The annual festivals uh, with, the, uh, with, with singing and dancing and the visible presence of God. All of that was now absent as they languished as it were in a strange land. He encouraged them to hold fast to the profession of their faith in Christ. They should exercise self-discipline they should practice love and they should keep on looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith and ours. He challenged them to be content with what they had, to guard against covetousness and to remember the promises of God which says, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. That message is still relevant in our time. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I have to say now that the answer to the world's crisis is not in material things or even in fixing the economy. Rather, the answer is in Jesus Christ. And the question is, will you trust him? Will you believe in him? Our task then 
is to know Him. And when we know Him, we'll obey His command. The young man asks Jesus, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus says to him, you know the commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is this, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. His commandment to love must take its rightful place in all of our lives. Love of God and love of our fellow men. These are the highest point in our earthly existence. The book of Proverbs gives us guidelines how we should conduct our lives for maximum fulfillment and for pleasing God. In the verses we read before, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my command for length of days, long life, and peace will be added to you if you follow the command of the Lord. Long life filled with peace is what we yearn for. And this word peace is very important, not least when we are in advancing in age. Uh, we're away from the limelight and the applause of men. And if you're not very careful, you can sink into the depth of despair, saying nobody loves me, nobody cares for me. But the writer is saying, if we love God and keep his commandments, even in the midst of this crisis, we can know the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And he says now, let mercy and truth, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Let mercy and truth guide you. And he says, write them in your heart. Your thinking and your feeling towards God is so crucial in this time of crisis. When mercy and truth govern our thinking and our conduct, we're bound to find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. When life on the horizontal plane, I mean the relationship that we have with friends and loved ones, when life on this horizontal plane is aligned with life in the vertical plane, a relationship with God, absolutely nothing and absolutely no one will be able to stop you. Favor and high esteem in the sight of God will be yours. And then the third um, instruction he, he gave, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. The word trust is a very important one. It means firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something. Put your confidence in God. He alone is the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Learn how to trust upon His reliability. He can never fail. Stop putting your trust in people and perishable things. Don't lean to your own understanding. You and me know too little to make all the important decisions that we have to make in life. We need to go back to the source, which is God. Let us learn how to talk with Him in these times of crisis. Let us learn to trust His wisdom. And let us learn to listen more to what God is saying to us. And the writer says, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. And when he says in all of your ways, 
I think we have got to think some practical things now. What does the businessman do or the professional uh, does when the contracts are cancelled? When paying the bill, uh, the rent and the mortgage is a serious challenge? What do you do when you're hit with bereavement and many of our people or experience bereavement at this time. When what do you do when sickness is uh, taking the whole of your body, and pain unbearable is uh, is there? Perhaps you're furloughed, and it might well be a sign of an insecurity in your job position. Perhaps you're challenged in your health. And uh, maybe you're worried about staying alive because so many people seemingly are dropping off. The writer says, in all of these situations, you should trust in the Lord. Put confidence in Him and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Consult Him. Wait on him, and he will direct your path. We need to put our trust and our confidence in our God who is unchangeable in order that he can help us through these troubled times. Our hearts go out to those who have lost loved ones as a result of COVID-19. We pray that God will comfort and strengthen them and that their trust in Him will never waver. So the current lockdown is having some positive benefits. I believe that we're reading God's Word more and hopefully we're obeying them. We're praying more and hopefully more fervently. We're worshiping more and uh, more personally and hopefully also we're getting more intimate with our God. And I notice also there is more genuine concern for others including our neighbors and those who have who are working at the front lines including our own members. And it's good to go out on the street and join others in the community and clap hands for those who are working in the health service in particular and those who are on the front line. Let us not stop doing uh, these things and let our hearts be knit to God as we serve Him. However, we must not fail to grasp the eschatological importance of the time in which we are living. These are the last days and the signs of Christ coming again. They are clearly to be seen. What we are witnessing is a shaking and the writer of the Hebrews also talk about shaking. God has promised saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, uh, but also the heavens. Uh, at this phrase, yet once more indicate a removal of those things that are being shaken, so that those things uh, uh, that are made with hands which cannot be shaken, may remain. God's love for us, God's care for us, and our love, these things are solid. We must not allow them to be shaken in these troubled times. And then he almost uh, concludes by saying, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. When all is said and done, our man-made customs and traditions, our denomination affiliations, and such the like are not very important at all in the sight of God. Rather, what is important is that we trust the Lord, 
love him with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, and with all of our minds, and our neighbor as ourselves. May God bless you as we move forward into the days and the weeks ahead, and we pray that uh, this lockdown will soon come to an end so that we can get back together, and it's going to be real, it's going to be powerful when we all get together to worship and celebrate the Almighty God. Pray for your neighbors, pray for our young people that they would stay connected to the Lord. And whatever your challenge, trust the Lord and he will see you through. God bless you and we'll see you next time. I love you, but Jesus loves you best. God bless you.